Hello, it's a bit of a different video today. We are going to be firing up a steam engine on a historic boat. So if that interests you, keep watching. And if it doesn't, no worries, we'll see you in the next video. So we're currently at Gillingham Marina and they had an event on here yesterday where they had some live music, band playing, um, there were people canoeing in the basin here and there was a special offer day in the chandlery. And also there was a historic vessel here, which we're gonna be looking at now. So here she is, she's called Barking, and she's a, a working boat from the Thames. She was built in 1928, and she's now looked after by a trust. And we're gonna go and speak to some of the guys there now, and hopefully we'll be able to fire her up. So I'm here today with Derek, who's the skipper. Good morning. And Jim, who's the engineer for the day. And the gentlemen are from the Vic 96 Trust, who run this boat and another vessel called the Vic 96. And uh, I'm just gonna head down to join Jim, who I believe is raking out, is that right, Jim? Yes, I'm raking out yesterday's fire. It's, we did only a short run, so there's very little clinker in it. As long as I get the ash out through the fire glass into the ash pit, I don't have to empty the fire out, and I can light the new one on the old one and burn up the cinders in the process. Perfect. See, if you look at this, there's a little bit of ash here. A really very little clinker. In fact, I'm having trouble finding any clinker. There's a little bit of clinker, which is fused ash, which can block the fire bars and stop the air getting to the fire. Okay. But there's so little clinker today, it's wonderful really. It's jolly good coal. It's Welsh dry steam coal from the Foss E. Fran colliery in South Wales. We hope it'll keep going, but since the government's doing away with coal-fired power stations, mm. they might not continue. Yeah. And if they don't, any other coal we get won't be as good. This is nearly smokeless, very high heat value. You get a more efficient uh, uh, boiler out of it. Uh, and you can't really see it here, but when you burn Welsh dry steam coal, it, it swells up. So what you, if, you, if you take a lump of coal this sort of size, two inches across, if it's half burnt, it'll be four inches across or more, opening out like a cauliflower. You can see its fossil origins. But as it swells, it, it improves uh, the surface, it enlarges mm. the surface area. It gets hotter and hotter. The Great Western Railway ran almost exclusively on this stuff. And we exported it round the world to everywhere, to Australia, to Hong Kong, to China. Yeah, if you look at the Cutty Sark, for example, in Greenwich in 1869, the trips out to China was sometimes with Welsh coal because it was, it was the most magnificent fuel uh, and because it's smokeless as well very small, low volatiles it doesn't pollute like some coals yeah. and anyway I've heard it described as proof of the existence of God so it's a wonderful stuff this is just a small single furnace scotch boiler the Titanic had 29 three furnace scotch boilers of which 25 were double ended so you actually had 157 furnaces I think it is and they had uh, a stoke an engine room gang of 325 men to run them <laughs> this is just a toy by comparison and you have the furnace here with the grate Underneath, you have the ash pit beneath the grate, and I've got to clean that out yet. Yeah. It all goes up to the far end to a big box, which is the combustion chamber, and then there's about 120 odd tubes, about two inches diameter, come back into these smoke boxes, and then the suction of the draft up the chimney draws the heat and the flames into the combustion chamber through the tubes, and by that time the heat's out of it and it goes up the chimney. Yeah. 
it's, except in the boat it's called a funnel. <laughs> Row engines and steam wagons have chimneys. That's the last one. Perfect. Thank you. I've now cleaned that out and we've got three big ash buckets of ash out and not much else. I'm now going to cover the grate with coal yeah. to a couple of knobs thickness. Then I can light a fire in the usual way, paraffin rags, wood and coal at this end and it will slowly work its way up the six or seven feet of the length of the grate till the whole thing's blazing and Lovely. we've got steam. Lovely. That's the idea. Let's use up some of this tonne of coal in this side. I'll try to balance the ship up a bit. When we've got it going really well, we found that have a fire fairly thick along the sides where the water is around the firebox and thin in the middle so it's really hot and we got it up to nine and a half knots holding 135 psi. So you just soak, soak your rags in heating oil or diesel, then preferably if we're really clever we'd have had this firewood in a bucket of paraffin overnight mm. and it would all be absolutely saturated, but it will go all right. Right, right, like the rag. There we go. Get it burning a bit. You often find the draught pulls the thing so in the draft already because the boiler's hot. Yeah. Ian said, when you've got it really going, get it to about 800, and that tells you a lot. And it's much more responsive than the pressure gauge to how the fire's doing. Mm -hmm. Well, David Carter and I, when we got it to nine and a half knots, with the breaking out of the ash pit and things, we got it actually round to about 1100 degrees, and then it stopped because it's, it's a peg. <laughs> so I don't know how hot we did get it, but it burnt all the paint off the funnel, and it did not go well. <laughs> but then Keith Tom's very kind, he repainted the funnel for us when we got back. But... Uh, you can do it. Pressure gauge, it's not really singing at the moment. You need to get it so you can hear the water singing in the boiler, exactly like a kettle. And when I've raised steam from cold in it, it was a few weeks ago now, it took two and a half hours to get it from naught to 60, and then no time at all to get it up to pressure once you've got it hot, but there's several tons of water in there, I yeah. haven't worked out what it is. But, yeah, it takes a lot of energy to heat water, yeah, doesn't it? There's a lot of yeah, specific heat to go into that, yeah. even before you've got it boiling. Then you've got the latent heat of vaporisation to go into it as well. Yeah. So it, it takes a while to get it going. Once you've got it going, it's very difficult to stop it. Yeah, we've come into Chatham Harbour before now with too big a fire up the river. You sit here for hours just trying to get the thing to calm down. 
you rake the fire and it just gets hotter. You think you're getting into the ash pit and it doesn't go through and you damp it all down and it still won't go out. So, <laughs> so it, once you've got, go. yeah, all of it, it's slow to warm up, slow to cool down. Look at that. Now, first of all, I've got to get a little bit of steam on, and we'll slowly fill the engine room up with steam. But you can't hurry it either. Think of all that cast iron, you've got to get from ambient temperature up to something over 212 Fahrenheit. So, hello, yes, we're in the wheelhouse now. This is where we control the vessel from. This is the steering position, so we steer from here. We control the engine room, or at least we talk to the engineer by the telegraph. So we ring for half a head or stop. Um, we communicate with other vessels with the radio and or sound signals by using the whistle. Are they? No, it's a quite an effective whistle. So, uh, <laughs> but beyond that, uh, everything else is polishing brass and so uh, and paintwork and hard work. So the actual pleasure side of this is fairly limited. We 90% uh, is work and 10% pleasure. But the whole thing is uh, well worth doing. Yeah, the satisfaction you get from 
seeing a vessel like this maintained and being able to go to, to go to the river and yes it's it's always hard finding volunteers so if at this stage we can ask for anybody who's interested to contact us via our Vic 96 website that would be good yep anyone that's interested in helping with the restoration and running of the vessel would be uh, be, be more than welcome fantastic well thank you very thank much thank you very for much coming. indeed Jim. yeah that's thank okay you. it's been a pleasure thank you yeah and good luck and it's, it's great to see you maintain the vessel so well well we've all got to work at it it needs a team of us yeah and we work together we know each other's strong weak points yeah. So we actually get on famously. It's Super. really rather. We've developed into a group of friends, and as friends, you can achieve anything. Exactly. Well said. So yeah, if anybody wants to come in and join in, get stuck in with maintaining these vessels, then as Derek said, check out the website and get in touch with the guys, and they'll welcome you with open arms. Well, thank you, Derek. Well, it's been a pleasure. thank you, Chris, for today, and that's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Super. Hopefully, we'll bring some volunteers your way. Lovely. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi Chris. Bye, thank you. Hello, what are you doing? Oh! It's in love with the bridge. Do you know it's Father's Day today? It's Father's Day. And I'm very lucky to spend it with you. Emma, do you know that Daddy is always, always, always going to love you? Do you know that? I am. Always. Thank you.